Hi, this is Mo Volans back with another screencast for Audio Tuts. And in this video, we're going to be continuing the two part series I started on demystifying the mod matrix. Now, the first thing you'll notice if you watch the previous video, and if you haven't, it might be a good idea to watch it now. Um, but the first thing you'll notice is that we're in a different DAW, we're in a different application. We're in Logic, we're using the ES2, which is for now Logic's flagship virtual analog synth. And uh, the reason I've moved from Reason that we started in using Thor is not to confuse you. Um, it's really just to show you that you don't have to um, be using one specific synth to be using a mod matrix. That plenty of synthesizers have got this feature and you can really float between them um, as long as you have the basics in place. So I really wanted to demonstrate that it doesn't matter what instrument you're in. If you understand a mod matrix, you can apply it to any instrument. So here we're going to be looking at slightly more advanced features of mod matri uh, matrices, if you like, and uh, this will be applicable in Thor as well as in the ES2. So what I decided to show you in this video is three different elements. We're going to be looking at the via function. We're also going to be looking at affecting multiple similar parameters. Um, so let's say you want to uh, change the pitch of all three oscillators or the um, cutoff frequency of both filters at the same time with the same source. I'll be showing you how to do that. And also I'm going to show you some slightly more advanced uses of modulators to modulators. So let's think about something like um, altering the speed of an LFO over time with an envelope. So that's something that we're going to get into. So there's three areas uh, and we're going to start with the via function. Now, although this is um, not really an advanced uh, feature, it's something that some people won't use um, so much. So if you are going to affect the frequency of a cutoff, a cutoff frequency of a filter with a parameter, you may skip over the via function, but it's really important to understand it. Let's have a look at why now. So first up, I've started with a really simple patch and it's actually in the ES2 under tutorial settings and it's the analog sort and knit patch. Uh, and it's just the, an initialized saw weight. Really, really, really simple stuff. The filters are wide open. There's only one of them switched on. I've got it on fat mode. And this is just so that if you sweep the filter and add resonance, we don't lose any volume. Um, the uh, envelopes are pretty much zeroed out with full sustain. And we've got nothing in the mod matrix. Now, this is an alteration I've made. I've made sure that the mod matrix is completely zeroed out and everything's switched off. Um, that's just so that we've got no routings active. We've got one saw wave um, oscillator going on here and no effects. So really, really straightforward. Um, what I want to show you now is, um, um, what I want to show you now is um, maybe introducing some vibrato to um, the pitch of oscillator one. So if we're going to go to target here in the first slot, and these are just slots just like in Thor, and I'm going to go to pitch one and we're going to leave it with LFO one. And let's have a listen to that. If I turn it up and we want it to be a bit quicker than this and obviously not as intense. Okay, there's our vibrato effect. It's very, very simple. It's a tiny amount of pitch uh, modulation using LFO1, quite a quick pace. And um, at the moment, it's on all the time. So you couldn't really call that a performance effect because it's, it's constantly on, which is not what we really want with vibrato. We want to be able to switch it on and off or fade it in and out as we play. And this is where the via control comes in. Now it's right in the center here. And I'm going to go to uh, the mod wheel, which is a classic, um, you know, use of the via function and a classic way of introducing these performance effects. Um, you can see as soon as I did that, the scale changes. Now, what this means is it's over how much is the mod wheel going to affect the amount of uh, modulation that we're going to introduce. Now, this first one here um, is currently at the level we set it at. I'm going to set it to zero which really means that at the bottom of the mod wheels movement, we're going to be at zero. And at the top, this orange section, we're going to be at 100%. So let's have a listen to that. 
far too much. So let's move this orange one down. And you've got to make sure you grab just that because you can move both of them at the same time. And let's put it to about 20. We were at 16. We can go a little bit more intense than that. Let's go about halfway. Now we can introduce our vibrato over time. And it's not just vibrato that you can use this for. You literally could be affecting anything. So uh, let's have a look at, say, um, affecting the cutoff of uh, both filters. In fact, we'll just go with cutoff two. And I'm going to move that down. And that's introducing filter modulation. And it's not just the mod wheel that you have to use as your via point either. We could use aftertouch, uh, we could use the pitch, pitch wheel, uh, we could use velocity, pretty much anything that is in this list. So there you go, there's the via um, function, and I think it's a really useful one, and definitely something that um, you should think about using for uh, external controllers. Next up, let's take a little look at how to uh, modulate parameters that are similar, but with the same source. Okay, so we're going to just get rid of this one for the second. I'm going to turn it off, in fact. And let's get this resonance turned down. Now let's say we want to use both filters. So we'll blend the filters together here. Now the good thing about the ES2 is they've really thought things through and we've got a cutoff one and two control here. So you can automatically modulate both cutoff um, parameters of both filters. And the same with the pitch, we've got pitch one, two and three. But in other synthesizers, this isn't always the case. In Thor, for example, you can't do this. You haven't got the option to automatically um, apply modulation to all the pitches of all um, oscillators. This is probably because the oscillators can be so varied and so different in Thor. But if you want to do this, uh, you can just go to pitch one, uh, pitch two, and pitch three, and modulate them all with the same thing. Now, if we switch the various uh, oscillators on here. And mix them in. And we could, of course, put our mod wheel back in as the via point. and put these all to zero. Now when I move the mod wheel, all three pitches are affected. So if you're in a synthesizer, it doesn't have the option of um, modulating three things with one um, choice in the list. This is a really simple way of modulating three different parameters. You could do this with both filters, both resonance uh, controls from two uh, to two filters and uh, various effects units. The third thing I want to show you is something quite interesting, and that is modulating modulators. So let's say um, rather than using an external control to modulate a parameter like the filter cutoff, we can actually use uh, modulators such as LFOs or envelopes to modulate each other. Now I'm going to switch these pitch off, pitch uh, controls off for the second just so we've got a blank canvas to work from. And I'm just going to go back to the single saw wave. Okay, so let's start by modulating the filter, for example. So we're going to go to cutoff two, and let's modulate that with LFO one. I've added a little bit of drive, some resonance, and we've just got a basic low pass filter. So we've got a nice sound there, but let's say we want to change the speed of this LFO in real time. Now we can do it manually, obviously. But let's say we want it to evolve and change over time. We can use an envelope to do this. 
Now, before we get into this, I want to show you one little trick in the ES2, and this is specific to the ES2. When we pick the target, you'll notice that some of the parameters down here are greyed out. Now, this is only because LFO1 is picked as default down here at the bottom. And before you switch the slot on, you have to um, pick a random thing and change it from LFO1 uh, to something else. Now, this will allow you to pick LFO1 rate and we can now use envelope one, let's say, to change it. So just get into it, change this uh, top one to something random, and you'll be able to change this into uh, from one of the grayed out functions. Now we can change the attack. Uh, we're going to actually use envelope two here. Change the attack. And the decay. There you go, it's changing the speed in real time. And obviously you could use envelopes or you could use LFOs uh, to control these speeds or any other parameter. But remember, you don't have to just use external controllers. You can use internal uh, modulators to modulate other modulators. And then you can use via points to add external controllers to control these. So it does get pretty in depth and it can get quite complex. But at the same time, if you understand the mod matrix, then you should understand any of these routings. Whatever's in the list is available to modulate. The only real limitation is your imagination. So get into it, uh, modulate everything with everything, and you'll find you really create some interesting patches. So there you go. There's three examples of a little bit more um, advanced use of the mod matrix. Hopefully these two videos have shown you two different instruments, but the same sort of techniques and has really opened your mind to using the mod matrix a little more. Um, I'm open to suggestions for further synthesis videos and videos on um, any production aspect, uh, music production aspect. Just let me know in the comments what you'd like me to cover and I'll do my best to do that for you. I um, hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.